World Trigger. This is World Trigger Chapter 229, The Away Mission Test, Part 26. Um, Last we left off, uh, we're still in this uh, Away Mission Test, obviously. That is the 26th part of the story. Um, and we're they were basically trying to figure out uh, a number of ways for them to uh, advance in the rankings, uh, get some more points uh, that are also like, you know, kind of aside from the battle sims, which they a little bit figured out in the last chapter. Um, but, you know, now they're thinking about, you know, using uh, they explain that there's these vid universal assignments at the end of the universal assignments. There are four separate video uh, clip problems. So, you know, they're thinking they could get extra points on that by using the phone's camera uh, to record the the videos and then, uh, you know, watch them as they do it. But uh, as the operator on their team mentions that they they made it so you can't just record the video on the phone that is provided to them. So, you know, um, that's that that puts a, a pin in that. But Osamu immediately is like, wait. So what if we take a picture of the list of questions that appears after the video clip? And they're like, why? Well, if we take a pic, uh, they're saying if they take a picture uh, from the video problem one, that means that they can set, he can send all of them the questions that are based off of these, this video and divide them amongst the four, the five of them. And then they can mm -hmm. all take turns watching the video and they can all just fill out their assigned questions as they watch it on everybody else's laptop because everybody pretty much gets one viewing uh, per per laptop. So at that right. point, they can get enough answers that they can just share the answers with each other, and uh, that will get them 20 points per person, uh, reaching a 200-point lead on everybody, um, which is pretty wild. Um, that is pretty wild. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well, you hesitate to share this because you don't know if this is against the rules. And uh, Sue was like, well, what do you think? Is it legit or shady? And Osamu takes a minute. He's like, I think it's a legitimate strategy. And she's like, why do you think that? And, you know, he's like, well, part of this is that they want us to uh, is is like creativity. Did you notice that? And he's like, when tackling these things a no way, normal way, creativity wouldn't be an answer. So my takeaway mm. is that leadership was imagining a different creative way of solving these. So at that point, they're right. like, well, there you go. <laughs> what yeah, more? So checks out. Checks, checks out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at that point, Katori uh, asks if they can share the idea with uh, Roku Rose Squad um, because he is not doing very hot. So they do so. Um, and at that point, we cut over to uh, Rokuro squad and they're like, whoa, it's a pretty good fucking, uh, pretty good fucking strategy. So are we going to use it? And Rokuro is like, yeah, of course we're going to use it. Um, so they do that. Uh, they also get an email from uh, Miura, who is uh, Katori's other teammate, uh, explaining the Omni penchant thing from um from the battle sims and it's basically uh specifically designed for people like katori who has made it a point to use the strategies of squads that she's fought and use them in in battles of her own uh make them her own in a way and uh basically the omni penchant thing is a, a list of skills that she's gone up against before and she can basically i guess use two slots more than anybody else because She's basically using the strategy of other people on top of her own, like, natural skills. So, yeah, that works out. Uh, they're basically like, well, that would help. And um, we cut over to Kodera's room. And there's, like, a little story about um, the operator for, I believe this is Urashima's operator, actually, where she explains that she has trouble with parallel processing um, and... She's just trying to find ways to kind of like work their way around it. Uh, and she explains that Urashima is actually usually pretty uh, thoughtful about this and um, 
you know, is, uh, is, is really, uh, kind of nice about it. So. Yeah. Very considerate of his teammate, like everybody else <laughs> in world trigger. Yeah. Which uh, you gotta love. Yeah. To be honest. Uh, so yeah. And basically the battle simulation, the chap, this chapter in particular ends with the battle simulations, uh, about to start up after everybody's formulated their uh, unique strategies on how to get ahead. Um, and yeah, that's where we cut over to World Trigger, Chapter 230, uh, The Away Mission Test, Part 27. And really, this is just like a bit of a... This starts off with a bit of montage, basically, of using this new strategy. Um, and they basically... Uh, it, not to, I guess, summarize the entire thing and, and spend time, but we have uh, a draw, I believe, on their first match. Uh, their second match, I believe, was um, against uh, Kita Zoe squad. Well, they lost to... Do, 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 who they win? Oh, yeah, they lost, they lost to... Uh, Ka- they drew with Kakizaki squad. Um, their second match was against Kita Zoe, where uh, at the end of the day... They uh won that one, I think, right? Mm. Oh no, Kita Zoe's squad won. Uh, unfortunately, again, um, and yeah, there uh, we cut over to, and at that point, so Osamu is just starting to have a little bit less confidence in the attacks that they got, um, or in this new strategy they got, um, but you know. Uh, yeah, that was uh, the uh, we cut over to Kita Zoe squad just kind of celebrating. Uh, you know, they're like, they did it. Uh, Somei's strategy was great. Uh, so yeah, at that point, Kikuchi Hara is just like, I didn't I say we shouldn't fo- waste our focus on the battle sims. Uh, but you know, it all worked out for them because they got a bunch of stuff, um, going down. And at that point, Kikuchi Hara is like, you're really cool with destroying Kiku- Kikuchi Hara- Katori that badly, especially after she was so down to f- down and out yesterday. Um, at that point, uh, the uh, Hana is like, her operator Hana is like, well, Yoko will be fine. In fact, this probably lit a flame in her. And uh, Katori is actually hey, like, you, you don't know my girl. She's yeah. uh... <laughs> she's something else. Yeah, um, you really don't get she's it. She's built different. <laughs> yeah, you would you, like the things that motivate her are completely opposite from the normal human. Yeah, um, and you know, right on cue, huh? uh, Katori is actually pretty happy for her, which is nice. Uh, to be honest, a person who's usually discouraged like uh, Katori uh, is is pretty cool. And she looks over to uh, Osamu, who's feeling kind of down because the strategy that he came up with is not exactly working. But she's like, well. What are you so mad about? Sad about? It's this was only our second match. This leaves us plenty of chances to rack up the wins, and that brings up everybody's confidence. And she's like, "You're right. On to the next one, then." And that's where this chapter ends. Oh, that was faster than I thought it would be. Um, Josh, what did you think of World Trigger chapters two hundred and twenty nine and two hundred and thirty? Oh, so recapping both of them. Okay, so I thought it was such a clever idea. For them to for Osama to, to divide up them into units, and like even when you look at someone like uh, like um Aki, right? He has all of his like essentially like like damn near all of his own sniper units, and then like one other support, you know. So he's allowing everyone to play to their strengths, and then you know I'm glad that they're finally focusing on on Katora's uh, combos with the Omni Pension. They're gonna start fucking wilding. I mean, they got caught off guard by them grenades, them random, them random. They weren't random grenades, but the you know that fake out with the grenades was a pretty smooth. Uh, it was a nice strategy. I, I, I had paused for a second because, you know, in video, I can remember playing like video games and somebody using a really weird strategy, and it's like you know unconventional strategies could work out but once you know what they are it's like well you know you're not gonna be able to get away with that again but you know that's not that's not a sustainable solution but it's definitely helpful to get a quick win 
you know, for surprise factor, and that'll help them survive another week in the rankings. So I really like how World Trigger um, expresses those little micro stratagems, mm-hmm. so to speak. Anyway, yeah, a lot of wholesome stuff in these chapters. I uh, there was something that stood out to me that I can't quite remember. Maybe as you talk about your own thoughts, um, it'll come back to me. But yeah. these are some sharp chapters. I'm kind of, I want to see them really get into the mix of things, but I'm being patient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brian, what did you think about this chapter? Um, or chapter? Honestly. I I'm kind of <laughs> I'm a little over the, these whole test things. <laughs> uh, like it's just too complicated for no reason, in my opinion. It's it's. Oh, I think much. there's reasons. Yeah, but even then, it's I feel like it's taking like a really long winded approach to getting it uh, across. Like, I think the chapters are kind of interesting, but they're not really drawing me in. Um. Because it's, it, I feel like it's taking too long to get to the point, mm. essentially. Mm. Um, and I feel like we've been pretty, we've strayed so far away from where World Trigger kind of shines for a really long time. <laughs> like, it's been so long since we've had like World Trigger be, um, like a, like what it, what it, what it usually is, you know. I really war. loved like the combat. I really loved like the whole, yeah, rank wars and all that wow. stuff. It's awesome. And then we get here, and then it's just a bunch of, I don't know, not that, <laughs> and it's not really drawing me in at this current moment. Um, but I don't know. I kind of hope it kind of picks up a little bit more for me in the future. Mm-hmm. Those mm. are my thoughts. Yeah. Um, I have a rebuttal. Do you mind, Chris? Yeah, go for it. All right, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't always think about this, you know, but technically speaking, when we end the podcast, like, you know, when we finish at the end of, like, each podcast, I get to sign off and go about my life. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, have any major connections going on. But Christian... You're related to Brian. You're related to someone that said just <laughs> these heinous, disgusting <laughs> words about our beloved series, World Trigger. I don't understand, you know, like, I, I don't understand because I don't have to deal with it. But perhaps <laughs> during the process of you expressing your thoughts on the chapter, you could circle back to how, you know, what I mean? you can articulate what it's like. <laughs> to have someone like that in your life <laughs> that you have to be connected to. Trust me, I could have gone a lot worse, buddy. I could have said this shit is boring as fuck because that's what it is. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I said it. What are you going to do about it? This shit is boring as fuck. <laughs> Get World Trigger. <laughs> I'm going to need you to pick it up, all right? This shit is boring as fuck. It's whack, and I hate it. Just get me to the good shit. Well, uh, I mean, you, you, you said, caused you this, said, Josh. You, you did said, this yourself. <laughs> you said, get, you said, get me to the good shit. Yeah. Get me to the good right, shit. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I'll give my thoughts in that regard. Um, and then you'll circle back. I guess. So. <laughs> um, no, I, I I really like this chapter too. I'm I'm not. I think Brian's putting it a little strongly, just because you uh, you summon his rage. Um, but I I can kind of see where he's coming from a little bit. Like me and you, where we love this shit because we're weird, I guess. You summon his rage because <laughs> we're weird, I guess, and we uh, I guess we really. But I do agree that, like, you know, there's aspects of this arc so far that, like, are really, uh, really super unnecessarily detailed, probably. Like, 
like the battle sims being as complex as they are, you know, and um, I guess like the more uh, clinical stuff about uh, the the battle sims or, you know, like the uh, the assignment, the exam in general uh, can get a little taxing, I guess. the I love this arc for the character stuff. And, you know, what we're getting from all these characters, the little dynamics and the and uh, the the developments. And I think that's what this is supposed to be for. Um, you know, it's just building the supporting cast and making sure that um, we understand everybody's kind of defined personalities going forward. Because I imagine the cast is going to get a lot bigger than just Tomacoma 2 going forward. So uh, it's a good way to, I guess familiarize ourselves with these characters as much as we could before we actually get into like the meat of the world trigger story, which is the away mission. Um, right. So I, I, I appreciate it in that sense. And I really love pretty much everything about that, but I, I can see where Brian's coming from and I get kind of fatigued myself when it comes to uh, the very uh, granular portions of this story like, you know, how the battle sims work. I still don't truly understand how the battle sims work. Um, and, you know, the the other stuff, like, you know, the the uh, the written exam portion of it, I get, you know. Um, but I will say this. Uh, I do think that if this shit does end up becoming, like, relevant in the future, um, this is a good arc to reread. But as it is right now, it for me, it just doesn't feel like a good, you know, monthly read. If, no, if I can see that sense. for sure. This is uh, this is a tough monthly because there's also a lot of information you have to remember month to month. I feel like if, and you know, this is nobody's fault, obviously, but if World Trigger was still weekly, like we, th- this would be a lot easier to digest week to week. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, week to week this would be a decent arc but monthly oh my god yeah i think it's uh, it's also us and and us specifically we read like nine other stories so and some of these stories are detailed af as well like you got to read jujutsu kaisen and you know you got to understand curse techniques and how the fucking video game in this thing works (laughs) and 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 how nen and, and all the nen and the characters in Hunter Hunter, you know, so I guess in our particular case, we read a lot of manga every week. So it's a lot of uh, storage space in our brain to really like uh, to understand or, you know, at least remember the bits and pieces of uh... you know, speaking of Brian's word mean nothing because his favorite series is now Hunter x Hunter and they do the same <laughs> thing. And so I'm not Yeah, but Hunter Hunter Usually, all of its story. Go usually, ahead. Hunter when Hunter Hunter has a bunch of buildup and a lot of interesting plot points, it's all about like furthering the story. World Trigger right now doesn't feel like it's gap? really furthering anything. It feels like one big stall. For those of you guys who are now watching uh, the YouTube version, Josh is uh, spelling out Cap with his hands. Um, as Ryan speaks. <laughs> well, let me tell you this, though. At least uh, in Hunter Hunter, when they pull you off onto these like little branch off storylines, mm-hmm. they actually can keep you engaged for extremely uh, period, long uh, periods of time. Uh, like the that whole. That sounds just like World Trigger. World Trigger right now is there's not a lot really going on. Oh, there's a lot really going on, Brian. Oh yeah, that's where oh, you're man. wrong. I'm I'm that's so engaged in all the things so that are going on. So many things. <laughs> oh, I love the whole. Brian. I love everybody Yo. doing homework and sitting there, there the watching people do homework. Mission, you're gonna be like, oh. <laughs> Yo, Ooh. all those guys right. doing questions yeah. uh, by the teachers that they're giving. They're giving up. Like, where am I in high school again? Like, come on. Why am I? In, why am I supposed to be interested in them solving questions, bro? Well, like, am I studying for the SATs? To be fair, I know you don't have an appreciation for a slow and steady pace. However, yeah, you just had to. It deserves it. It deserves your time, and you know that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, You're entitled to your beliefs, even though I disagree with them and think they're poopy beliefs. <laughs> uh, can you write that down? Poopy beliefs. As you, you got poopy <laughs> opinions, Brian. 
but you but you're entitled to them um yeah i don't want to be harsh i think i think i understand i think i want to be harsh well i think what Brian... <laughs> i definitely want to be harsh you guys give this series a little too much fucking leeway well honestly no. I, hey brian i'm about the way to... that this arc is set up right now it is it's just not it i don't know was your favorite manga because brack broken for two fucking years yes oh yeah no. actually yeah <laughs> no yeah <laughs> No, yes, Togashi. my favorite manga cause back was actually fucked up for more than two years. Actually, <laughs> all right, but he he was like for twelve years. He was past the threshold of of empathy. It's he was like gone for bro, a while. What's going on now? No, I will. I Brian, I am trying to give you a little bit of leeway here because I understand how somebody could be kind of frustrated by. You know, there's a lot of things, I guess, in terms of time and pacing and uh, release that are working against World Trigger currently. Um, I'm very biased, and um, <laughs> Brian's wilding for fucking respect. I don't. <laughs> I don't well, think you're shitting on me for having an opinion on it. I'm just gonna keep shitting on it, honestly. All I, I hear is poop, 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 fart, fart. <laughs> coming from. <laughs> Yeah, I won't Come say that's funny because that's what I'm reading whenever I read World Trigger lately, too. I don't, he doesn't mean I don't that. Know. He doesn't you mean don't that. mean that. You don't mean <laughs> yes, that. Yes, I do. I do mean, mean that. <laughs> he doesn't mean it. Not like that harshly. He probably means it a little you bit. You fell asleep while reading it? Honestly, there are a few times where I couldn't even, like, it was really tough to get through a fucking chapter. Yes, now you're just. I'm not even yeah, joking about that. It I've, does I've, carry I've, on. It I've does been trying. On. I've been trying yeah. to be strong. I'm letting out all of my pent up frustration on, right. on well look thing. i i understand hey, what i'll i'll give you that it may have been stretched out a little too far i mean this is a 27 chapter art but 27 chapters in a weekly series would not be much i guess yeah it is it i mean is what it is. Got 70 fucking thousand pages for dragon ball super <laughs> So I think we could get another ten pages for World Trigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean the thing is, is that you know he are he is releasing weekly sized chapters, uh, once a month. If, that's if what the that. thing is. You know, like that's what I'm saying is that you know there's technically less chapters. Sometimes there's two chapters, but not all the time. So you know, it just it it does you feel the time a little more because it is monthly. But I'm sure that if this was weekly, that it would be a lot easier to absorb. And I feel like if you were to read it in a row you know like in collected volumes it would go down a lot easier um some series is tough to read as it's coming out you know it'd be that way sometimes i feel um i feel bleach was like that a little bit where like it's probably a better a bit, read yeah. condensed than it is yes than it is all in those, like over the week those were indeed the good times chris um when i speed reading bleach yeah uh, I don't feel as harshly as Brian, but I want to say that I do understand where he's coming from to some degree. Um, I think it is important, and I feel like all this stuff is going uh, to matter, especially in the next phase of the exam where they're they're actually going to be battling for real. Because uh, this is all about, you know, f forming a team, and it's it's a very like realistic way to do it, where you you force people in a room together and just force them to work together and f like figure have them figure out solutions it's not about the tests or the sims really it's more about like watching people come up with solutions and you know that stuff can be you know a little especially in the pace that ashihara is going it could be a little exhausting i could see how that could go honestly actually now that i think about it i feel like a big part of the fatigue that i get from this series is the fact that like is the environment that they're in is that it's all set in these small rooms and there's no real variety there's nothing like there's just not visually a lot going on it's more like a novel that. than a than a manga at the moment i feel that mm. i feel that but so like the, i get he's trying to tell like a like a more condensed story but i feel like it's it is sacrificing something and you guys have to admit that there there is something sure being sacrificed here sure i mean you know when you when you have a lot of uh, a big dynamic thing where the things are moving around a lot you sacrifice a lot of intimate character moments and you know like progression and story and or like character and you know it, it, familiarization with characters 
you always have to sacrifice something when you're telling a story. But you know, it's all, it's about picking your battles and what you're going to sacrifice and when. Uh, I I love it for you know what the characters are going through, and I do enjoy seeing them figure this stuff out. But that's just me, I guess. <laughs> uh, I. I didn't hear what you said, Josh. I don't know if you're and Josh and Josh. Well, all right. Any uh, any rebuttals before we move on? No. Nope. Yeah, I'm fighting the urge to head on a train to Williamsburg and throw rocks at Brian's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you did have some pretty intense fighting words. Hey, I mean, he, he came at me first. Hey. This would have not happened if he did if he did decide to do what he did. Yeah, but you know who Josh is. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is in It's about time that you know he's been shitting on my favorite series for years. <laughs> it's about time that I get I've never I get my fucking Hunter payback. I get my dues. I've never shitted on Hunter X Hunter. The, he, you did say that was your favorite series, and we have not been <laughs> shitting on Hunter Hunter. I'm not even gonna continue to address <laughs> this. <laughs> well, you know Josh is incendiary. <laughs> you know how Josh can be incendiary. What sometimes. does that mean? <laughs> he likes to get a rise out of people sometimes. <laughs> Josh is incendiary. Right, that's a good forward. title name too. <laughs> <laughs> he could be no, <laughs> and I love that about him. <laughs> but you know how he... incendiary quotes. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Well, that was World Trigger. Very so, all of a sudden polarizing thing in this on our show. All of a sudden, <laughs> I thought we were all on the same page here and loving Black, World Trigger, but so the cookie crumbles, I guess. 